what we're looking at here is an isolated cathode for a chlorine cell that I'm building. Basically the green cable is the terminal to provide the negative DC current and that black tube is just a gas vent that's going to allow the hydrogen gas to flow out of the glass isolation chamber. And this here is my feeble carbon anode. It needs to be much bigger but I don't have the money or the carbon. I started out with some bigger rods than this but I broke them because I'm very impatient. So I'm going to use this for the reaction vessel and I'm going to be generating some chlorine gas to try to kill a mole but for the most part one of the things I want to attempt in this experiment is the possibility of constructing a device I'm calling a chlorine torch. I don't know any other term for it because no such thing exists. But I do know from chemistry that chlorine does support combustion of certain elements to produce their chloride salts. So it may be feasible to produce a torch similar to an oxyhydrogen torch using brine solution or salt water extremely rich or potent salt water. I just had a little test set up here. I'm not getting very much current draw. On this black carbon rod that would be chlorine gas. And the transformer I have is only giving me about nine amps if that. Well I'm up to ten now. That's not quite enough for a torch. And I know my electrodes will be bigger in the other system, but... So, for whatever it's worth, this is the cell. Now, the reason why I'm separating the hydrogen gas out of this is because I don't want it to make a mixture of gas of chlorine and hydrogen to create a buoyant gas. I want to have some heavy chlorine falling down into this groundhog hole or mole hole whatever we got going on and hopefully poison him. Right there is going to be the positive terminal those three graphite rods that's the anode hopefully it survives for a while and I chose to use a copper cathode I did some bath testing over here that kind of showed that was probably a bad idea might have wanted to go with the stainless steel it doesn't mark the water up as bad now I do understand it because I don't have a diaphragm. A lot of my chlorine gas is reacting and turning into sodium hypochlorite. But uh, I don't really have the stuff to get all crazy with this right now. I just want to test it as is. See if I can get a usable amount of chlorine gas out of it. If I can't, then it was just a waste of time. But it's going to be something to look at preparing a 20 volt transformer because I think this is a 20 volt transformer. It's been a long time since I wound this. Some fairly heavy gauge wire there. Not sure how many amps I'm going to be able to run this at. But um, this particular setup here with no load for whatever reason I'm getting 16 volts. Um, that's kind of confusing me because I've got a, I'm pretty sure this is an 11 turn transformer. It's been years and years since I've messed with this, so. But at any rate, under load, it's only pressing 7 volts out and about 8 to 10 amps. So that's miserable. It's not going to cut it. So we're up in the voltage. And hopefully that'll get this thing producing a pretty good amount of chlorine gas. Okay, so here it is. Getting a green color out of it. You can see the water level inside the separation cell there is higher. I'm getting a very slow chlorine output. Probably not enough to kill moles, I don't know. I wasn't expecting it to be that minuscule. Now this transformer is like 
17.8 volts with no load and it's currently being powered by about 7.8 amps AC and the DC input is only 10 amps and that's at this high of a voltage so it's a good thing I didn't bother hooking up that other transformer but at any rate um, see what kind of wattages we're looking at here this is the actual wattage of the system in total now that brine solution is at maximum um, solubility or whatever you call it so at any rate I do smell some chlorine. It's mostly just air mixed in there at the moment because of that massive chamber, but see the hydrogen side's really getting it. That's just venting out of this tube here. Thing's probably leaking in a couple of spots around this lid. Or maybe not, I don't know. Changing the depth definitely helps. Obviously, of course, I guess. That's yeah, just falling back down in there. So, from what I understand, um, a lot of that green color is probably just some kind of copper, but it also might be the sodium hypochlorite. I'm not sure if sodium hypochlorite is green or not, but. From what I've read, this cell is not producing very much sodium hydroxide, at least none that lasts. This is for the most part going to be sodium hypochlorite. Yeah, so that's pretty pitiful. <coughs> I was hoping for hundreds of amps just loads of chlorine gas apparently that's just not how it works so here you go this is a fairly robust system I'm cranking about nearly 18 volts 10 amps and that's the maximum the size of these electrodes will allow as I said the lid may leak on this thing but that is the chlorine output probably do the same experiment the hydrogen output should be the same probably not going to go over too well see how it's pressing that level down inside of there it's just moving the fluids around at the moment here comes the bubble That's the hydrogen. I'm putting out just a little bit more hydrogen than chlorine. Because some of the chlorine gas is reacting with the hydroxide creating the hyperchlorite. So yeah, now this is going to take a second before anything will come out of it. Until that level in that secondary chamber changes. So, 
visibility sure didn't last very long. Can't see nothing now. I'd jot this down on the list of catastrophic failures. Took the better part of a day to throw this setup together. So, making chlorine gas is not very easy. So, the one on the right there is the chlorine production. I don't think I have any leaks on this lid. But for 593 watts, nearly 600 watts, it's just not doable. Yeah, I'm getting really hot over here. I need to get a little fan going on this thing. As I said, at some point this is going to start producing oxygen because the brine will get used up. At this point the jar is starting to heat up. Everything seems okay over here, fairly warm actually, but I don't know if I like that. I'm going to have to aim the fan this way. This is getting very hot, and for literally next to no gas production. The one that's really barreling out there is the hydrogen side. The slower ones to chlorine. At this particular rate, this is not sustainable. Oh boy. That was stupid. About 500 watts. Roaring away in there. Up to 13 amps. That is just not enough chlorine. failure. I'm going to go ahead and post this just to show you what won't work. And that if you do plan to do this for whatever reason, if you needed to, it is going to take quite the electrode array. Yeah, that is just too hot. I'm shutting it off. see what happens after what it looks like after it's had time to stand doesn't look very pleasant in there the sodium hydroxide may etch the glass slightly but I do not anticipate that it's such dilute amounts it takes extremely high concentrations to do that so Diode's not bad. It's only at 13 amps though. The transformer may be able to sustain that. 
it needs a fan on it. It's pretty hot. That wasn't a very long run time. But there you go. It'd take probably 10 hours before this whole chamber was evacuated of residual air. 500 watts for 10 hours, that can get a little expensive. There's a strange flow of black stuff coming out of the hydrogen cell section. It's got to be the copper. Some kind of copper oxide. It looks like the gas is getting out, but it's not. It's definitely a lot more hydrogen being produced, it looks like, than chlorine.